Welcome back to Satisfactory, today episode 13 with big plans. At the end of the last episode, you know, we upgraded two things. The first one is our oil factory, right? We have two oil deposits there, crude oil. We used to transform this only into plastic and rubber. We transformed this into a giga factory for computing, everything computing related. We have, of course, computers, but we also have circuit boards, AI limiters and high speed connectors. So that's this factory over here, fully automated production. And then the second thing is we upgraded a lot of our iron production. We upgraded uh, somewhere over here in this tower with blueprints. This is all blueprints, right? We upgraded our screws. And then over here, again, with a lot of blueprints, we upgraded the other two basic iron production, the iron plates and the iron rod. And this is all going over here. Now, if you follow my series, you know I like to plan things a bit in advance. So obviously, we're going to do something with that space over here, right? It's not going to stay empty. So this is definitely going to be one of the goals of this episode. But before we dive into this, I did want to remind you all of two things. One is you can go to my Discord community. You can find the link to join in the video description below. You click on the link and, you know, this is obviously completely free to join. And there you'll find a zip file that has all of my blueprints. You know, all of the blueprints that we've created so far, I like constructors, buses, refineries, the highway, the simple roads, mini factories like our copper ingot factory or steel ingot, our smelters, constructors, all of these, they are available for free on my Discord community. The other thing that I will do today as this episode launches is I will share my save. You know, if you want to get this save, if you want to get this whole world as it is today, to you know, restart from there, to get some inspiration, just to check it out, you can definitely do this. You just need to join and become a member of my community, you know, join the YouTube membership. I have launched this earlier this year. Don't hesitate to check once again, you know, just below the video description below, you'll find the join button. But for everybody else, yes, let's dive into episode 13, where we're gonna change this by a lot. And here it is, we still have the same small sort of plateau that's going into the highway. But now this has been expanded further. And instead of having a big hole there, we now have, you know, a straight factory from top to bottom. So obviously a lot of new things happening there that I'll explain in a minute. But before, you know, let's take a quick look at all of the goals for this episode. First of all, heavy modular frame. This is a very important one. You know, this is this material that you can see over here. And it's basically the last material of sort of tier five that we didn't really do. And even of tier six, you know, one of the last of tier six too. So we're going to do it, automate it fully. And with this, we're also going to be able to do a lot of new milestone in a hub, right? We're gonna need tier five milestone, the last one remaining, maybe two tier six, logistic mark four, which is really great, can I enable us to have belts even uh, faster, right? And similarly, pipeline mark two, so it's bigger pipes, you know, for your fluids. And then the last thing that I can show you right away is obviously extender storage too. Like I said, in the last few episodes, we started making a lot of new things. We started making plastics, rubber, AI limiters, circuit boards, high-speed connectors and computers. So they are all here. And we already had one over here for the AV modular frame, so we just need to start putting some into it. And you probably have already guessed that this is what we're gonna be doing over here. Instead of only two of the storages, now we have five. So over here, we still have the normal iron plate, but we also have two new ones next to it. We have the reinforced iron plate, which you may remember is just iron plate plus screws that goes into this one. And then we also have over here, the modular frames, the basic ones which is actually also a fairly simple recipe. It's reinforced iron plates plus the roads that we were already making over here. And then with all of those productions plus a couple of others, surprise, surprise, we're going to be able to do those heavy modular frames. Now, I haven't made tons yet. You know, you can see we're, um, I mean, still quite good. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, right? So it's not too bad. But yeah, we're basically producing with this factory two per minute. We're also producing a surplus of two per minute of this one and two per minute of that one. So, you know, this is a bit the idea is instead of just producing the minimum necessary to make this happen, I'm producing just a bit more of that, just a bit more of this. So this way, this factory has everything. We do transport resources. You know, this one actually that we're transporting over here, you can see the screws. There's a lot of screws that are arriving 
that are going down into the factory. Uh, this is one of the inputs. There are also two other inputs that I'll show you in a minute. But before, let's go down. Now again, for the bottom of the factory, don't hesitate to check the previous episode that you can find in the video description below. This is exactly the same. I didn't change anything. The only thing I added is now a pillar over here to support the next level. But then we indeed have two next level, right? You can see this one I didn't do with blueprints. It is not a huge number of, um, you know, assemblers and manufacturers and things like this. So I decided to do it manually. So let me show you a bit what is happening. First of all, over here, we have four assemblers, right? You can see four. They are doing reinforced iron plates, which means we're doing 20 iron plates per minute with this. And it's fully green, as you can see, working pretty nicely. No problem. So... 20 and as I said basically we're gonna use 18 so we have a surplus of two this is going to take iron plates and screws so obviously the iron plates they are actually coming from downstairs right this is something we've been producing at the bottom right this is this one there it's being made over here and goes directly into it we see it there it arrives there then what will happen though is we will have you know a smart splitter because I'm basically saying, uh, you know, first send some iron this side into, you know, the assemblers, so those four here. But when you're full, you can send that back up and it goes into the storage. So that's the first input, right? With obviously basic splitters at ground level. And then the second input is screws, right? This is coming, as I showed you just before, from, oops, sorry, I am under the road so it's coming from here it goes down obviously it goes down first into this level and i'll show you there right it uh, comes over here but also then it will go down and continue into this level right so that's what the screws here are doing this is 270 so this is actually enough right because we need 240 so that's fine it goes there there and there and you know we do the same trick as always with an elevator if you don't remember Basically, you put three splitters on top of each other because that's the perfect size for an elevator like this. I have my metal beams to put electricity on, right? And on the other side, we're starting to merge, merge, merge into an elevator that goes into the top floor. So before we talk about this, let's talk about the top floor because actually, you know, as you saw, this is not really sent here. It's sent to the top floor first. Because in the top floor, we're going to have more of those assemblers. This time it's actually six, so two rows of three. These assemblers are going to take the reinforced iron plate we've just been talking about to make modular frames and also iron rods, right? So first of all, I mean, as I said before, right, we have one of these um, elevators that goes directly to the top. That's the excess normal iron plate. Then over here, this was the screws that I mentioned. They go directly down. Basically, this is where, uh, you know, this belt here is just to put it where I wanted it to be. Versus this is where the road ends. But yeah, we're getting, you know, more importantly over here, we're getting the uh, reinforced iron plate. Similarly, as before, there is a smart splitter where we say, well, first send these reinforced iron plate to all of the uh, assemblers right that you see over here it starts there continues at the bottom then goes around right around and around and continues this side right you can see over here and it ends here so it brings reinforced iron plate to the whole factory and you can see this is all full right because we're producing more than what we're needing because one of these requires three we have six so that's 18 we're producing 20 so we do have a surplus as i said and therefore this surplus then will go into the overflow which is over here All right so from time to time we're gonna have an overflow that goes to the top into storage then secondly what we need is also iron rod so iron rod they were coming also from the top right this is uh, not from the top, sorry, from the bottom, this factory over here, right? This is making the iron rod. So they go over there, they go here, and you can see they actually go to the end there with one that will go to the top. So let me show you actually what's happening here because it's slightly complex. First, so it comes here from the bottom. Then we have a smart splitter where, as always, we said first go into the factory. Then later, if you're full, you can go to the top and actually taking the stairs, you can see it goes really right to the top to um, the storage. So this one is really the storage one. 
But everything else goes here, goes into this elevator to go to the top floor, where it arrives here to be the input, the second input, right? We have this splitter, so some of them goes this side, some of them that side, right? And then we do the same trick with the elevator down to bring it, right? And so that's the input. We have the input, input, input. And then in the middle, it gets merged. And I just realized here that I forgot one belt. So that is why this one was completely full. Versus the other one obviously are not full because we are using this to do things. So what are we doing with it? It goes all the way over here, right? It's merge and merge. With the smart splitter, as always, that's going to say first, um, you know, you go that side. And then when you're full, you can go in overflow. And in overflow will be to the top into the storage. But first, more importantly, you know, you go this side and you can see we have four inputs. This is the four inputs of that manufacturer over here, which by the way, I think this looks pretty cool with, uh, you know, the elevator coming there. And then obviously with all of this in the manufacturer, this is where we're gonna start making the AV modular frames, two per minute to be precise, as I said before, and they go all the way over here into the storage. So let's take a quick look again downstairs. So we need four inputs, the modular frames, the steel pipes, the in-case industrial beams and screws. So obviously the first one we just talked about, right? These are the modular frames we're making on the floor above. They're coming directly here. And the second that's also pretty simple is the screws, right? It is the second output of the truck station, right? You have, you have two in outputs of the truck station. So that's the second one comes here, goes there. And uh, you may have realized we need 200 per minute. So this is really why I have two, right? Because we need 240 there, 200 there. If I combine both together, this is not enough because right now we're limited at 270. And then we have two other inputs, right? The steel pipes and the in-case steel beams is definitely a lot less, 30 and 10. But you may also remember that we're actually not making that much of these ones. Instead of using trucks for this one for now, um, you know, I decided to actually use belts. You can see the belts over here, right? And we can follow those belts. So we have the two conveyor belts, right? One for the steel pipes and one for the initial beams on the other side. And we can follow them, you know, inside or outside if we want. It is this corridor here, or I don't know what you want to call it. You know, I can go to in the middle if you want to see. But yeah, it's, it's not that long. I mean, we're already almost there. So that's why I didn't use a truck because it really wasn't that far. Uh, it comes from over here, right? Where in the future we can make something a bit more pretty, but basically it's being produced downstairs there. So what I did, I uh, just send it up and now we're sending it down over here under the highway, right? That's what you see over here. And then it goes into the factory and down and directly into the manufacturer. And then as I was saying, everything in terms of surplus over here, as you can see over here, for example, we have some surplus. This one is full. We're starting to get some surplus on this one. And over here, this is full. And we're starting to make this one over here, right? So this is all coming over here. So later on, you know, we can also have other truck station that take some of these materials to send everywhere else. But yeah, this is the factory, basically. I put also some beams over here, right, to support the road. It is as always, or, you know, if you know me, you know, I do most of the time fairly basic exterior, but I still think it looks nice. You know, there's a lot of windows to see what's happening inside. I can see everything is green. So that's what's important. But most importantly, now we have a very advanced material, right, that is fully automated. So let's just put them into my inventory and go back to the base because now we can do two things. We can obviously put them into our storage to really expand the storage, like I've been saying. But more importantly, we can also start doing some of those new milestones. I have already you know, delivered a lot of things to those milestones. For example, for this one, you know, we needed 100 of motors. Obviously, we automated this in previous episodes, so that's done. Same for the plastic and the wires. But we're missing over here the modular AV modular frame. So that's done. I'm not going to click on launch because I want to also do many others, which is first logistic mark four, right? Where similarly, oh, I also need some computer. Sorry, give me one second. Forgot about this. 
we need 400 of rubber that's easy we've already delivered that 200 of um, industrial in case industrial beams we've delivered this but we also need 100 computers so let me do that 100 computers and we also need 50 heavy modular frames so we can deliver it done so up and up done and last but not least i want to do pipeline mark 2 which oh we need 1000 of copper sheet we've delivered 400 of plastic we've delivered 400 of rubber we've delivered and 50 heavy modular frames so that is done and now we can launch all of it right we can launch this one good we can also launch right away this one and don't worry i'm going to show you in a second what all of those things give us just want to launch them all be done with it <laughs> good i don't know if that's a bug or not right but remember that basically once you launch something your pod is in the air and therefore you need to wait in this case we need to wait 14 minutes um, before we can launch another one but as long as you've already given all of the resources you can do new ones i cannot do that one for example because i haven't uh, given all of the resources needed so it's blocked but i can do the other ones so anyway we have done first of all over here alternative fluid transport right now when we're transporting fluid is through pipes right we don't have a choice we have to put them through pipes now with this we will have a choice we can continue to do pipes and by the way you do get also the industrial fluid buffer which is a way bigger buffer and hopefully i don't know if i have the resources and i also don't remember where it is <laughs> here it is so before we used to have the fleet buffer right and i see i'm using copper ship to build it but you can see this is this size and it's 400 of capacity now we have this one for 2400 it does require by the way heavy modular frame another reason why you do need to start making modular frames automated um, yeah it's way bigger as you can see so that's great another reason what i was saying right you need heavy modular frames is if you look at our manufacturer each manufacturer costs tens of those heavy modular frame a packager does not but also for example the truck takes five right so there is many reasons why you want to automate everything in the game anyway so yes with this you know we are able now to have more fluid into a pipe but more importantly we are able to package or fluids package or water or oil etc into package oil or package fluid it requires you to build something new an empty canister and it requires you to then put the empty canister and the fluid into this packager so let me try to show you quickly we'll use them of course in future episodes but now i just want to show you a high level how that works so you have a packager over here right it has two um, inputs and two outputs one is uh, durable material like the canister basically and one is a round pipe for fluid and this can also unpack you know you can pack or unpack we will have to make as i said those canisters into a constructors uh, where is it um, here it is empty canister right it's going to take some plastic to make those empty canister the good thing is it's a pretty good production rate right 30 to 60 so pretty good now you may be wondering what's the point you know why would you do this well because now you have this package oil or package fuel you can put this on a belt you can put this in a truck before with the fluid you couldn't do that you had to really transport it with a pipe and moving to tier six the first one you know related to what we just talked about is pipes pipes mark two and pipeline pump mark two right with this one you can now transport 600 per minute of fluid instead of 300 it's worth noting that there is some it's not a bug but let's say that it doesn't work exactly perfectly at 600 so you may want to always you know keep it to 580 or those type of things but yeah it still doubles in a sense and then second the pipeline mark two which instead of pushing the fluid by 20 meter up high it's 50 meter now so it's really a good one to have and then last but not least we have unlocked logistic mark four 
which will give us obviously Mark IV, but not just this. It also gives us something else that's very important because I want to do it in the next episode. So it does give us access to, as I said, Mark IV for the conveyor and the lift, which now transport 480. So instead of 270, you go to 480. That's really a good boost. But it also gives you access to the fuel generator. And if you remember, if you've seen some of my previous episodes when we started to talk about fuel, I said at the end of the day, you probably want to use a lot of your fuel for fuel generators, for great you know, electricity production. It's way better than coal for sure. But we couldn't do that at the time. But now we will be able to do it. So that's definitely going to be part of the next episode. You know, in the next episode, I do want to talk about fuel, but not just normal fuel. We're also going to talk about turbo fuel. In the next episode, I also want to talk about phase three. You know, we still have two things to do, two new materials to construct. So we should definitely do this. And talking about milestone, right? There is still two milestones for tier six. But to be honest, we're not far. Because if you look at this first one over here, it's motors, we're good. It's plastic, we're good. It's rubber, we're good. The only thing we haven't delivered actually is the package fuel because we just unlocked it. But it will be a great you know, way for me to show this to you. And by the way, this package fuel can also be a great way to then use for your vehicles and also the jetpack that we'll unlock over here. And then last but not least for tier six, we will get the trains. Right, monorail train technology. It requires actually resources we have. You know, we could have done it in this episode. I'm gonna keep it for the next one, but it's pipes, steel pipes, you know, steel beams. We have delivered this, a bit more of computers, and 100 of AV module of trains. So, once again, you definitely want to automate this, but this will give us access to all of the train elements. And with this, we can really start expanding our base, you know, expanding on the map by a lot. Of course, as always, don't hesitate to share if you have any questions, photo requests, and remember that on my Discord community, you can find all of the blueprints. And if you are a member, a YouTube member, if you join, you can also get my save. Thank you for watching. Smash the like button and I hope to see you next time.